Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel and welcome to Kolob. This is just a small lake of Zions National Park. It's a totally different section of Zions and it is quite spectacular. It's a perfect backdrop to film this bike, the mock wheel. The cool thing about this place is the speed limit for the road is 35 miles per hour, so the cars are going pretty slow, but it is one of the prettiest five mile stretches you'll ever see. I ought to check it out if you're in uh, Southern Utah. Now the bike I have today is called the Torpless from Mulk Wheel and it costs $1,699 and this looks to be a strong contender and a very competitive price range for all-terrain fat bikes. Now we should expect some great hill climbing ability as it has the highest torque rating I've seen. It also looks to be fairly comfy with some good travel in the front fork and a large padded shock absorbing saddle. Power and comfort are always a good thing, a good combo. So let's see how it does starting off with the speed test. Let me show you the power this bike has, how fast it can go. The Torpless does have a 750 watt motor and that is powered by a 48 volt, 16 amp hour battery that can be removed with the two keys they give you. There is a battery level readout on the battery itself and it does take five to six hours for a recharge. Now in the menu, you can set the pedal assist levels from three up to nine. I do have them set to five, that's just my favorite. So I got five pedal assist levels. I'm gonna test the speed out on each one of those levels. On the highest level, they say the bike can reach 28 miles per hour. And also in the settings on P level eight, you can limit the power from zero to 100. They have it in kilometers per hour. I do have it set to the highest output for this test. So let's get to it and uh, see how fast it can go. So pedal assist one is 10. Level two is 15. Level three is uh, 20. Four is 25. And level, oh dang. Level five is 30, 31, 30, 31. Yeah, keeping up with traffic now. Next up is an acceleration test. Time to see how long it takes to hit 20 miles per hour. There is a bunch of weight with this bike at 80 pounds and it can carry a rider up to 400 pounds. So it has a huge carrying capacity. Now, as far as acceleration, there's a bunch of things you can change in the menu. For example, P9, you can set the throttle from a zero to a non-zero start. P level 10, you can set to just only use the throttle, only use the pedal assist or a combination of both. P11 is the pedal assist sensitivity from one to 24. I do have it set to the highest, most sensitive level. And P12 is the motor sensitivity. That, uh, that basically means how much power it gives you, a little or a lot. I do have it set for the most power giving setting. So I want to show you how powerful the Torpless is when everything's cranked all the way up. Got a full charge on the bike, pedal assist level five in the first gear. Here I go. About a less than, just less than a revolution for the power to come on. And when it does, it is abrupt and fast and powerful. Jeez. Woo. Wow. Yeah, guys, this bike just wants to go. Now on straight throttle, here we go. A little slow off the, the first 10 feet, but then it kicks on. And that is nice and powerful for an 80 pound bike. Woo, already hitting 25. Yeah, that's, uh, that's got some great acceleration. Really happy with that. It's time to see how long the Torpless can go. This is the first of three range tests I'll be doing. It's got a range rating of 35 to 55 miles. And for this test, I'm just gonna keep it at 20 miles per hour without a lot of stops. I've got a full charge on the bike. I've already started my tracking app and I do have my microphone plugged in. So I'm gonna tell you uh, what I think about the bike as I'm on the range test. So here we go. To start off, the Torpless does come in green and gray. There's two colors. There's a rear rack, and it looks like there are some places to attach a basket. And then there's hookups on the front for another rack or basket. This also does come with uh, two full coverage fenders. The back one was already pre-installed. The front one I just didn't install, but you do have that option. Well, as far as comfort, feel, things like that, uh, the balance is spot on. I could easily ride this without hands right off the bat. I have taken this up over to 30 miles per hour and at that speed, it just glides. As far as the geometry, it's a big and beefy bike. The length is 75 inches. So this thing is just huge. If you got a smaller frame, you're gonna feel pretty small on this. The wheelbase is 47 inches. I'm 5'11 and standing over the bike, there's maybe about two inches of clearance there. And that's not a lot of clearance for a mid-step bike. And then there's a reach of 23.5 inches, which I prefer about a 24 inch reach. So this is right in my alley. 
Now the handlebars, which I'll talk about in a second, do adjust, and so you have a rider size rating of 5.3 up to 6.4. I'm down about 25%, and the app shows 8.63 miles, but I forgot to hit start, and so after I went three about three miles, and so really that's 11.63, which is awesome for the first 25%. I rarely hit double digits in that first battery bar. Before I hop into the cockpit, I wanna talk about the noise. And the tires are the loudest thing on this bike. The motor does hum a little bit. It's, it's, it's a little bit below average as far as noise for uh, bikes that I've tested for fat bikes. Not too bad. Okay, so now diving into the cockpit, there are 28 inch alloy aluminum handlebars, and that just gives you very nice handling. You can take this around corners at some pretty, pretty fast speeds. It handles it nicely. The handling is also what I call more, more stiff definitely uh, a stiffer it takes more effort to turn the bike down to 50 percent that's six uh because there's 10 battery bars there that six bar was that was incredible that just lasted and lasted and lasted anyway i've gone 20 point well so 20 plus 3 23.56 miles in half of the battery which that's that's awesome now the grips are something that you would expect for a cruising type style bike. They are wing tipped, very large wing tip actually. There's a lot of space on the outside. And there's two places where they screw those to the handlebars so they don't move. On the right side, there's a seven speed SIS Shimano shifter. Going up is just one at a time. Coming back down, I can go from seven to one with one push of the thumb. And that's a basic thumb shifter. Now as far as the saddle goes, it is one of my favorites. There's a lot of cushion, kind of bigger as well. And then the shocks underneath. One of the more comfortable saddles I've seen for a bike in this class. I just pull out the main road for a second. That's why I'm on this gravel road to give another battery update. Down to about 25% battery left. And I've gone 25, 26, 27, 28.58 miles. I mentioned the tires earlier. They are 26 by four inch fat all-terrain tires. They do seem to be a little bit higher quality of a tire, kind of a softer rubber. It's doing a pretty good job handling these smaller cracks and bumps on the trail. Then you got a front fork suspension with lockout and adjustment, and that has 110 millimeters of travel. So the overall feel and comfort of the bike, if I had a rate it from one to 10, I would give it an eight uh, for paved trail. We'll see if that holds true for off-road. There's no shaking, vibrating, or rattling. It feels well-built. So yeah, I think it's a very strong contender for a bike in this price range. Okay, I uh, made it uh, back from the first range test. My app recorded uh, 29.85 miles. That is with the three miles added. So the total is 29.85, almost 30 miles with 1,582 feet elevation gain, which is probably closer to around 1,700 feet. Anyway, that is a killer range with that much elevation. Very, very happy about that. Now, as far as the battery or power consistency, the first 25% uh, matches the second 25%. You get uh, 10 to 13 miles for each of those uh, batteries, or those sections. Then the third 25%, about five, six miles. And then once it hits 25%, it pretty much, the bike pretty much dies. And that will hopefully give you an idea of what you can expect when you're around my weight of 185 pounds if you ride at about 20 miles per hour. Welcome to the second range test. And uh, for this test, I'm gonna ride the bike hard, full out. Picked an area that has got some, uh, a lot more elevation gain. Charged up the bike already, and I've started my tracking app. Let's see how far I can go. I lost 25% battery, and I've hit 8.20 miles with a lot of climbing. Down to around 50% battery left, and I've gone 15.64 miles. And this is my second time coming up the canyon. It, it is a little bit slower than the first time, but uh, it's, it's, got, it's got plenty of battery left and uh, pretty good range so far. So I'm gonna keep on going. But coming back down, I uh, hit uh, 37 miles per hour and I'm impressed how well the bike handled that speed. There's very few bikes I've gone that fast on. So uh, it, I was a little bit nervous, not gonna lie. I think my comfort level is about 30, 31. Anything above that, it, there's a little bit of uh, wobble, not a ton. Uh, like I said, it, it did better than I thought it was going to. But uh, anyway, I just wanna let you guys know how it would hold up uh, with faster speeds. I made it back to my uh, truck. The range test is over. My app recorded 25.48 miles and the elevation gain of 4,228 feet. That's gotta be the most elevation I've ever had, uh, so which is, that's awesome. Anyway, gonna recharge it, do a uh, off-road range test and show you what it can, uh, what it's like, what it can do off-road.
The first thing I'll say about the Torplast for off-road riding is you gotta be choosy on the type of trail you take this on. The whole bike is just oriented for more of a cruising type of a style. You know, with the high handlebars, you're up higher off the ground too, so you have a higher center of gravity. I did push the handlebars all the way forward to give me more of a, an aggressive riding type style, but even at that point, I was still up pretty high, and so uh, you don't really want to take this on super gnarly terrain. I would not suggest going fast on this bike, unless it's a well-traveled uh, dirt road. Uh, I went over 25 miles per hour on that, and it, it did pretty good. But any washboard section or, or, or rocks or bumps in the road, uh, I did slow down for those, because. You hit those at speed and it does shake you and rattle you pretty good. I do like the tires though. They are some of the beefier ones I've seen for a bike in this price range. They handle this type of terrain, which is really sandy and, and a lot of gravel and some hard pack. Handle that type of terrain very well. So again, just be choosy on the type of terrain you take this on. Well-traveled road or ATV trail. Not a lot of rocks, not a lot of bumps. And go slow and you'll be good. It's hill climbing time. Time to see how well the Torplets can climb some hills. I have a 13 to 15% grade, two block long hill. Now the motor produces 90 Newton meters of torque, which is the most torque I've ever seen out of any bikes. And it also has a hill rating of 30%, which is more than double this hill. Anyway, I'm gonna hop on and show you what it can do. Okay, gonna tackle this with some momentum first. It's uh, gonna begin to climb right about here. Again, I got a full charge pedal assist five. I'm in the seventh gear and I'm gonna bring that down pretty quick because this starts to climb. And this is about as steep as it gets right here, 15% grade. Feeling a little bit of resistance, but the bike's doing, I mean, pretty much all the work. I'm just keeping the pedals turning. Hasn't gotten below 10. Bouncing back and forth between 10 and 11. That's, that's what I was expecting for 90 Newton meters of torque. That's very impressive. I'm standing at the top of the hill. I just came up for the hill test. It is time for a brake test. The Torpless comes with 180 millimeter disc brakes and aluminum alloy levers that uh, have motor cutoff. So I'm gonna cruise on down and show you how well they work. Get some speed here, so light braking. Nice and smooth. Love that sound. Doesn't take a lot of effort on the, on the levers to engage. And then get some speed hard brake here. No skidding on that back tire, which is impressive. I had to really crank on the levers to, to stop that. That's a lot of weight. And this is the steepest part of the hill. Uh, so for braking in this price range, I'd, I'd probably say it's about average. Let me run you through the LCD screen and control pad. On the left here, there's power button up and down for the uh, pedal assist level. Hit the M button to switch through different readouts. Second pad, you can find the light switch. It's got a pretty nice looking headlight and then tail light underneath the rack. And then a horn. And then to access the settings, just hold down the up and down button at the same time. Hit the M button to scroll through the P menu. There's no waterproof rating for the bike, so avoid rain, splashing, things like that. But it does come with a two year warranty and ships in two to three days. Well, overall, I thought the Torpless did pretty good. There's just a lot of power for this bike in this price range and a very high or fast top speed. 31 miles per hour is pretty impressive. Range isn't uh, bad either. Can't argue with that for the type of elevation gain that I got for those two tests. If you do want to pick it up, I've got the link in the description. Also, check out my website, electricrevolutionreviews.com. There you can find all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Hit that like button before you go and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.